Hi guys, wanted to do a quick video for you showing you how to do the first problem, the Kino um, problem on Technology Project 1. And that Kino problem involves StackCrunch, so I'm going to start out here on the sign in page. I have an account already, so I put in my email address and my password, and I'm ready to go. But the first time you do this, when you don't have an account, if you bought the book and it came with the StackCrunch uh, access card, you will want to click on redeem an access code and follow the directions there to set up an account. If you bought the book used or you're going ebook only, then you'll need to subscribe to get access. So you'll want to click on this one and there will be a point where they ask you to pay the six month um, fee with a credit card. So I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account. And no, let's not save that password. I would suggest you not do that if you're working in a common lab. You don't want to save your password where someone else will get in there. Though you don't keep much personal information in a StatCrunch account, so it's you know not the worst ever, but as a general rule, don't do that. And then when you're going to go to do a StatCrunch project in general, what you'll want to do is click, in, click on Open StatCrunch and it will open up a window that kind of looks like Microsoft Excel or something with different columns and we're going to work through there. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly show you um, what it would take to follow the directions there. The directions are laid out pretty step by step on the handout but this will give you the visual. So part A says to create the bin of numbers um, we're going to choose data and sequence data. So data and then there is sequence and the way this works is you tell it where to start and where to end and with Kino we're going to start at 1 and go to 80 and then the by is how are you going to count like if you put uh, say 5 here you would get the numbers 1, 6, 11, 16 and so on because it would be going up by 5's for standard counting you just want that to be a 1 um, you just want each of the numbers one time and you only want the sequence one time so we can leave those other things alone the 1 to 80 is the main part and counting up by 1's so compute is just kind of like go for StatCrunch. So they say compute even when they're not going to do any computing, but they're just going to do some task for you. So when I click that, it fills in the sequence. It always pops up a box that says, hey, we did what you wanted. You can just close that. And if I scroll down, I'll see that the numbers go all the way to 80, but you don't really need to see that. Okay, and they called that column sequence, um, which is okay but I think the directions tell us to change that let's see what it says in part B it says now that we've got those change the name of the column from sequence to Kino bin so I'm gonna click on that name I'm just gonna backspace to get rid of all that and then I'm gonna type in Kino bin in its place and now I have a name that fits what I'm thinking of those numbers as representing and then in part C we're gonna simulate two Kino draws by doing the following steps, select data and sample columns. So here's data and where's sample? It doesn't say sample columns, it just says sample now. One of the troubles with StatCrunch is it changes um, the menus every once in a while, um, but it's still pretty close, data and sample. And then where are we sampling from? Kino bins, it's the only choice, but we still have to click it to see it activate over here. Um, don't fill in things like this if the directions don't say anything about it. And this says we want a sample of size 20 when you read the directions. So we're going to fill 20 in for sample size. And we are going to do two Kino draws. So we're going to want to enter two for the number of draws. So it takes care of both of those. And we want sampling without replacement. And that's the standard type of sampling is without replacement. If you click this, it would change it to with. But we don't want that. We want without. So just leave that alone. And I think that's it and then we'll click on compute and it should give us a couple samples. There's some other things I'll note here real quick. Um, I mentioned to you guys in class that um, random number generation is done from a formula and that um, there's like a, a seed to that that kind of decides how the numbers turn out. If you picked a fixed seed you'd get the same thing as somebody else who used the same fixed seed. We don't want that. We want it to be a mystery. We want it to feel random. So we want it to say use dynamic seed. That's probably set anyways, so you probably don't need to mess with it. You want to say what bin you're choosing from, how many numbers you want, how many times you want to do it. And then click on compute, which again is like go for StatCrunch. So again, it's telling us it did that. And we've got our two columns here. 
if we look at the directions, it says let's put more appropriate names on there. Let's call this one Kino 1, it says. So I'll backspace through all that and change it to Kino 1. Highlight this one, backspace through all that, change it to Kino 2. And then maybe just click over and kind of like a random cell over there somewhere. And we're basically done with that. So our next task is to put those results in a report. Part E says to uh, well, Part E says to save your results, and you can do that. It's kind of optional. Um, I'm not going to go through the, the full step here, but you would just um, choose data and save and then give it some name. It's very common with StatCrunch things that we never go back to the data later. So if you save it, it's just kind of playing it safe in case something happens and you need to get your data back. We're gonna, I'm just going to show you the screen capture part, which is Part F. And once we have um, captured the screen, we don't really need the data anymore. We'll have the results we need in our report. So I'm going to go ahead and get my report um, going and set up. Uh, you can use Microsoft Word or a Google document. I have my Google Drive open here. So I'm just going to click on New and I want a new Google Doc. When you pop that up it'll be untitled. You might want to change that to something um, like Tech Project 1 and then maybe put like your last name right there just something like that you can pick whatever you want um, you're not going to send me the file but sometimes people do um, so it'd be nice if it was labeled clearly like that and then I think the first thing you should put is your name and then you're supposed to be working with a partner so maybe you would put partner one maybe you have two partners so partner two put the actual names not just that stuff and then we're working on um, problem one from the project, so I'll label that. I always like names to be in the upper right, so I'll highlight these and try and move those over. All right, where's that alignment? I can't find it. So what am I trying to do here? I want to write justify this. I use Word more than Google Docs, to be honest with you. So you have to watch me think on the fly here. Hmm. Format. I apologize a little. Maybe this is helpful. Now you know. I don't know everything. I can't find it. Ah, is it this? No. feeling a little silly. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to click on this which is right align. It'll move the names over to the right hand side. So kind of an optional step but I would. that's where I want your name so if you're not going to handwrite it there then you want to do what I just did. Alright and then we're going to put the screen capture in here and that is part um, 1F says to use the screen tap capture tool to do that so I'm gonna put an F here as well and press enter and put my um, screen capture right here to do the screen capture we're gonna do the snipping tool this is gonna go out of my video window here but in the lower left you have a search box and you're gonna wanna type the word snipping in there S N I P P I N G and it should show you a snipping tool app as a pop-up and you will click on that and you will see this pop up and it should start a new snip for some reason that didn't happen on mine so I'm gonna just drag this kind of down here out of the way a little bit I'm gonna click back over to StatCrunch what I want to capture is just these two Kino draws so I'm gonna go down here to the snipping tool and I'm gonna click new snip you'll see how the screen kind of went a little bit gray and then I'm going to highlight through like this to do the capture and it was just a click and hold on until you got the right rectangle and then let go and it captures that window that you want and then you can use control C to copy or you can do edit and copy and then I can get that out of the way click back over to my project and then do a control V for paste uh, I think if you try and right click paste it'll tell you to do control V so it's best to just do it with the keystrokes and there's our Kino output. And then Part G says make a list of any numbers from your Kino draw that were repeated in the second Kino draw. So let me go ahead and do that. So this is Part G. 
and let's look for repeats. So maybe I'll find them all, maybe not. Here's the number one is in both lists. So I'll put that in my list of repeated numbers. See if I can spot anything else. How about the 7? No, the 28 doesn't look like it. I'm, I'll stop talking here, but I'm going to keep looking. Twenty nine is another one. See if I can spot any more. I'm just trying to do a quick scan so it's possible that I'll miss something. But I'm just kind of looking at each one in the left and seeing if I can spot it over there on the right. And what you should notice is that you find some. It's super rare that there's no repeat. So if your initial instinct is, I don't have any repeats, you should look again. I won't be that upset if you miss some of them, but if there's some there and you say there's no repeats, then you're going to get dinged for that. So make sure you're looking as careful as you can. And then it says, does the fact that you have repeated numbers violate the sampling without replacement requirement that was specified? So that seems weird, right? We said do the sampling without replacement, and yet we got repeats. But notice that the number one isn't in Kino 1 twice or in Kino 2 twice. It was once in Kino 1 and another time in Kino 2. If it had shown up in the same thing twice, that would be a violation. Sampling without replacement means that in a given sample, you would never get the same item twice. But if you do two different samples, there can be repeats in the two different samples. So this is not a violation because the repeats were in two different samples. It's a good thing it's not a violation, right? We asked the Stack Crunch to do it sampling without replacement. We'd hope that it would carry through for us like that. So that would be the output that I would have for uh, number one. Yours, yours will look a little bit different because you're going to get different numbers randomly generated. It's also worth a mention that if you're using a Mac, uh, Grab is a tool that works like that, and if you don't have Grab on your Mac, do a Google search for screen captures on a Mac, and you'll find that there are some tools similar to Snipping Tool on the Macintosh as well. And that's it for number one, but this project has another problem on it, and you don't need a separate report for each one, so I'm just going to hit enter a couple times and put number two, and then I would just continue my report here, um, and that next one is in StatSims, and I'll do a separate video for that.